How's it going everybody? Rocky Mountain EDC here and today I have part two of my folding pocket knife collection. So this is uh, looking really mostly at just folding pocket knives. I'm gonna have a separate later video for my fixed blades, um, but this is part two uh, of my pocket knife uh, collection series. So make sure that you guys check out part one if you have not already. And if you end up enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are not already, subscribe to the Rocky Mountain EDC channel. Thanks. So kind of kicking it off um, into the pocket knife collection, let's start off with just a random knife. And I'm not drawing these out in any particular order. I'm just kind of uh, going uh, with whatever feels right in the moment. So up first, we have the Albatross Hawkbill um, blade in um, Damascus, uh, standard cherry wood handles, aluminum anodized pivot collars, brass internals, steel liners, um, a contoured pocket clip that actually goes with the shape of the handle, and a standard uh, liner lock design. So this is a really cool knife and it does kind of have this uh, nail nick slash uh, thumb hole here. So I have found that it actually does work well as a thumb hole opener and it is a small knife. Um, so that does work. So it's not really, uh, even though it's so far out on the blade, it actually does work as a thumb hole. It doesn't have to necessarily be up there. There is enough texture on here that if you wanted to, you could use your thumb just to press on the blade. Um, but they do have this option here. Just a very unique looking, um, blade. Um, it's very cool. It's actually very ergonomic and very comfortable in hand. Um, and actually makes a really good utility knife because of that really downward swoop of the hawk bill. Um, so really cool on there. Next up we have an OTF and that's going to be the Templar Knives um, 1876 um, American flag version. Um, this is a double action OTF in a Tonto style blade with 440 um, what is it? 440C blade steel. Um, very simple design, has a glass breaker. Um, pretty functional, good action, snappy action. Uh, it is gonna be a little thick uh, behind the edge, so it's not really gonna be a very slicey um, blade considering uh, the height uh, from the edge to the spine. Not very slicey, but it is gonna puncture and pierce into material very easily, so that's pretty nice. Staying on that OTF train, we have the AKC Extreme EBO in green anodized aluminum handles and a front uh, switch uh, trigger here that is also double action. And on here, we just have a standard OST 8 steel um, and it is gonna be a drop point style blade. So nothing there, it does have a uh, type of coating on there to help keep the blade from rusting, but shouldn't be a problem with OS8 as it is already uh, a stainless uh, steel. Standard pocket clip, nothing special there, um, but pretty cool knife. It actually is very light and the action is very snappy and it is a usable uh, blade for sure. Again, on the O, um, TF train here, we have the Smith & Wesson um, automatic OTF here. This is gonna be a single action OTF. Um, so this does not have the double switch. So if I try to pull down on that, it doesn't work. Um, but it does have this release lock here and then a slide bar you can use two hands with, or what I found is I can just use my thumb and pull it down and it locks. And it does have a safety feature there. So that's pretty cool. And this was kind of just my introductory knife into out the front knives to see if I uh, enjoy them, see if I actually like them. Um, so this is a staple in my collection as it was kind of my first out the front uh, pocket knife. Next up we have a classic and that's gonna be the Buck 110 classic knife, ebony wood handles, brass bolsters, um, very large clip point style blade 
in the Boss, he treated uh, 440 uh, C blade steel. And then, of course, a very strong and reliable uh, back lock here. So for me, this was a staple uh, type of knife that I wanted to get in my collection because this is really a groundbreaking knife when it comes to uh, pocket knives in general and what we enjoy today kind of um, ushered in a new way for how we think about pocket knives. Um, and it is without a doubt um, what a lot of people think of when they think of a pocket knife. They think of a buck 110. It's been in movies, it's been in shows. It is a classic knife for sure. And it's definitely worth having in your collection. And I know that this um, will always remain in my collection simply for the fact that this knife has had such an influence um, on society and the knife world. And I just think that it looks awesome. Next, we have just kind of a multi-tool here, and that's gonna be the Leatherman Sidekick. Um, it is, I would say, a medium-sized um, type of multi-tool, so it's not gonna be as large as some of the Leatherman's um, options that they have, um, but it is nonetheless still capable. It does have a decent-sized pliers here, which I really like. Um, it is a capable uh, multi-tool, and it is spring-loaded, so I always like having spring-loaded pliers for sure. And it has a plethora of tools on here. It has a blade, um, standard straight point, uh, sorry, straight edge blade here. It has a saw, it has um, screwdriver in terms of Phillips, flat, has a bottle opener, cap lifter, wire stripper, file, um, all. It has pretty much everything you would expect in a standard multi-tool. Um, I don't carry this one as much, even though it has a pocket clip. It's just a little too heavy for me. Um, that's why I carry the Gerber Dime instead. It's more my style and sits, suits my needs for my daily life. Uh, but nonetheless, the Leatherman Sidekick is a great multi-tool. Next, we have the Case Peanut. Um, and this is actually my first uh, slip joint style knife. It was given to me as a gift. And it is just a classy, great starter knife slash collector's knife. You get that jack pattern with the peanuts. So you get two blades coming out the same side. You get a main clip point style blade, pen blade, the My First case um, engraving on there. Beautiful bone uh, handles on there. Um, and just a classy little knife. And honestly, can get a lot of the jobs done for what you would need in just an everyday little carry knife. And it is easily pocketable in the fifth pocket. Next, we have a, another case. This one was acquired by Chance in the Woods, and it is a case stockman. And as you notice, it is missing two blades, and this knife has a little bit more of an in-depth story um, for which I have a video up on the channel talking about this particular knife. Um, but nonetheless, this is really cool uh, in the fact that this was um, unrecognizable when I found it, and then I restored it back to whatever function I could get. Um, and it does seem to appear that it um, was between the 70s and the 80s in terms of its time period. Um, so really cool that I found this out in the woods, restored it, um, even though the other two blades were not able to be recovered and I had to grind them off, um, the main clip point style blade is still functional and usable and very sharp. Next, we have the Leatherman Free T2. So this is part of the Leatherman's Free series. So again, the tools that can be opened up and operated with one hand. Um, and they go up in progression in terms of T3, T4, um, up until you get to the um, the actual plier uh, incorporated Leatherman Free. Um, so very cool design. They're actually very lightweight um, for their size and what you would expect. Um, but this one's just very standard. You have just a standard blade here, kind of a uh, reverse Tonto slash sheep's foot style blade on the end. Really cool locking mechanism allows you to really um, use that one-handed opening. And then you just have a standard awl um, with a Phillips head, screwdriver, and a bottle opener. 
and then a flathead screwdriver slash scraper on there. All right, so moving on here, we have the Smith & Wesson Salute Our Troops um, edition pocket knife here. So just kind of a collector's uh, knife. Uh, you could use this for daily tasks if you wanted, um, but it's more meant to just kind of be um, a collector's piece um, in terms of that really cool design on there with the American Eagle um, and kind of the um, American design pattern on there. So really cool. And it does say we salute America's heroes uh, with a deep carry pocket clip and I believe an 8CR13 MOV drop point blade, really nice front finger choil, standard thumb studs, and a liner lock. So very cool knife here. Uh, great little collector's piece. Just something fun to add to your collection for sure. Next we have the Kershaw Blur in S30V with the blacked out uh, handles. And this is a kind of a special blur. And if you notice why it's a special blur with me opening it up, you'll notice something that it is not spring assisted. Um, so this Kershaw blur ID spring assisted it. I took out the assistant spring because I personally don't like assisted opening knives. Um, I think that there are plenty of pocket knives that you can make with a good detent, good bearing system, or fossil bronze washer system that doesn't require an assisting uh, to get the blade to open up smoothly and effectively. Um, so I took that off and it completely changed the knife. Um, and it, this is the upgraded version of the blur. So it's in CPM S30V, which is gonna be a little higher than the uh, 14C28N that I believe that they use, that Sandvik steel. Uh, it is made in the USA, has a standard uh, pocket clip with this kind of uh, grippy textured uh, material inlaid within these uh, black anodized aluminum handles. Just a really cool knife, a great pocket knife for everyday carry. Um, has kind of a strength component to it, um, so it's not um, it's not going to break on you very easily. It's very strong, very sturdy, but still pocketable as a pocket knife. I would even range this. Uh, it's a full size knife, um, but it's not a heavy, heavy duty knife. It's a really good blending type knife. Uh, the only thing I don't really prefer on this is going to be that recurve style blade shape right here. So kind of this belly and this recurve, not a big fan on that. Um, I don't really find it that useful uh, for what I use it for. And it's just kind of a pain to sharpen unless you have the appropriate things to sharpen it with. So that's the Kershaw Blur. Next we have Spyderco Tenacious in the green G10 handles. So this was um, actually my second Spyderco behind my Spyderco Paramilitary 2. And this was more of a purchase so that I could get um, a Spyderco that was a little cheaper and kind of a beater knife. So something that I could kind of uh, beat on but not be too worried about um, damaging it per se. And plus I had seen this knife for such a really long time and I kind of wanted to see what all the hype was about. Um, and it is a great knife. Um, and I do have a video up on the Spyderco Tenacious and some of the things that um, they could improve. And what's really interesting is one of my gripes was the pricing for the steel that they give you. Um, and the fact that it's such a great design and such a really cool knife in its, simpl in its simplicity and practicality that we're getting such a, a lower end steel. And we don't have many options. I mean, it's okay to have the lower budget option, but coming up with some different tiers for people that like the design, but maybe don't like the steel, um, they could do that. And uh, it has been just released that Spyderco is gonna come out with a CPM M4 steel, which is a huge jump up from 8CR13 MOV. Um, so that'll be exciting, and I'll kind of make a um, kind of readdressed video for my critique on the Spyderco Tenacious. Um, so stay tuned for that.
Next we have the Civivi Elementum in G10 with carbon fiber overlays and Damascus blade steel. So just a standard CVV Elementum style um, knife. Again, this one's gonna be a little bit more of a premium version and this was a gift uh, for my birthday uh, slash Christmas. So very cool, very nice design. The action is just smooth. It pretty much takes everything about the Elementum and just upgrades it and uh, makes it even nicer. Um, so the practicality and the simplicity of a CVV Elementum, but with a little bit more uh, style and bling to it. So really cool knife. Um, definitely one of my favorite knives in my collection. Um, and it is um, definitely gonna stay. Next up we have Benchmade Bug Out CF Elite version. So we have the um, CF Elite handles, so kind of the carbon fiber grivery. So these are gonna be a little stronger and reduce a lot of that flex that we see with a lot of the grivery models. Um, so that's really cool. And again, just a standard drop point S30V blade, uh, deep carry pocket clip. Um, for me, this was kind of, um, well, the gateway for me into Benchmade. Um, so I know I had seen when this came out, um, a lot, a lot, kind of all the hype behind the Benchmade bug out. It had kind of been just thrown in your face as this is the best knife that has come out since um, things maybe like the Buck 110 or other models um, that we'll talk about. But this was kind of my introduc introduction into Benchmade knives. And I definitely enjoy the Benchmade Buck Out. And if you have not already, I do have a video up on the channel talking about whether or not the Benchmade Bug Out is worth the hype. So definitely go check that out if you're curious. Um, but nonetheless, the Benchmade Bug Out is a great EDC knife. It is extremely light and very easy to pocket, but not sacrificing in terms of the blade. Um, length that you get. So you get a lot of cutting edge in a very light package. And I think that's, again, really the design behind the knife. That's the purpose of the knife. Good action, great steel, in my opinion. I love S30V, very slicey, just a really good uh, little everyday carry knife. Um, so that's the Benchmade Bug Out in CF Elite. Next up, we have perhaps um, my most carried pocket knife, in the moment, at the moment. Um, not only m one of my most carried pocket knives, but also one of my favorite pocket knives in my collection. That's gonna be the Benchmade 940. Um, this, for me, for a long time was a grail knife, so something that I had been uh, kind of going after. And I personally just loved uh, the looks and the whole design of everything. Uh, it's light, but strong, a working, blade shape with a good steel it just kind of hit all the marks for me and what I want for an everyday carry knife um, really good ergonomics just great in the hand and works beautifully um, so the Benchmade 940 <coughs> is definitely a staple and one of my favorite pocket knives in my collection all right, last four knives here. We have the Civivi Imperium in shredded carbon fiber and copper flaked handles with full steel liners and a Nitro V drop point blade. This is a really cool knife and kind of one of um, my more different <laughs> versions of Civivi that I've bought. And I have, again, three Elementums and then this. Um, so this is kind of my uh, way of Kind of testing out the waters in terms of what Civivi has and I definitely loved that shredded carbon fiber and copper flaked handles so really cool there I like the front flipper design something different from my collection um, and really just a great everyday carry knife actually it's really good um, in terms of everyday carry next we have the we banter so very simple in terms of um, kind of like the CVV Elementum, very simple and practical in its design. 
Um, I know I'd looked at this knife for a while and I kind of liked just a simple knife, something again for EDC, something very simple like the bug out, right? Something that, um, you know, wasn't too flashy. It was just meant for using and cutting things. Um, that's kind of what I was going for this. And I definitely like that uh, green micarta. <coughs> so when I know that this version came out, um, it was definitely on the list for me and I acquired it and have it to my collection. And I have absolutely no regrets uh, for getting the Wii banter. Next, we have the Spyderco Manix 2 standard uh, version here uh, in S30V black G10 handles. And of course, the infamous ball bearing lock. This was kind of my um, sought after Spyderco after the PM2. So after I had acquired the PM2, this was kind of the next Spyderco that I really wanted to get. Um, simply because it kind of seemed like just like the PM2, but a little bit more ergonomic. It seemed even more directed in terms of those ergonomics, and I really wanted to um, give it a shot. But not only that, but also seemed to be a little bit more on the heavy duty side. So you get full stainless steel liners, arguably an even stronger lock than the compression lock, and just a really cool leaf style blade shape there. Um, so this was definitely a really cool Spyderco for me. I actually picked this up from uh, the Spyderco uh, factory from the shop in Golden, Colorado. So this was um, even more cool because it was uh, picked up in person. Um, so very cool experience and a very cool knife. Next up, Benchmade Super Freak. This was another um, very kind of braille knife for me. So I know I was getting into Benchmade and really liked um, kind of what I had seen from the bug out. And um, this just seemed like a bigger bug out. So I, I liked the bug out, um, but I didn't know how small it was gonna be and how light it really was gonna be. Um, I knew it was gonna be good for EDC, but I was like, well, what, what does Benchmade have in terms of a little heavier duty um, so I got the Benchmade Freak and it's just a really cool heavy-duty EDC in my opinion uh, it's got thicker um, you know thicker handle materials G10 partial st uh, steel liners in there and CPM M4 so it's gonna have a really strong blade steel and really good edge retention on that blade steel so just a really cool knife in my collection Lastly, we have the most recent acquisition to my collection, and that's gonna be the ZT0562. And for me, this was a Grail knife that I had been uh, wanting to obtain for a really long time, simply because um, I just love the overbuilt design um, that it has to offer. And it is available all the time, uh, relatively, compared to a Hinder XM18. And it just works. Great ergonomics, good blade shape, good action, and in a heavy duty profile. So really thick blade stock. Um, so this was kind of another knife that I wanted in my heavy duty folders, which I also have a video up on the channel that you can check out. And it was kind of another step for me to get another heavy duty folding pocket knife um, that I could use. So the ZT0562, really cool. Um, only been carrying it for um, a little bit here now, maybe a week or so. Um, so definitely gonna be making a video of this coming soon. Uh, really looking at some of my more um, personable impressions in terms of its use and what I like and dislike on it. So definitely stay tuned for that. And I hope that you guys enjoyed my pocket knife collection that is my current collection as it stands and again if you enjoy this video give it a like and subscribe to the rocky mountain edc channel thanks